Okay, welcome back to New York City. We're live here at SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv is the cube. We'll go out to the events and get the signal from the noise, and we are here with some, a lot of signal uh, with two great guests, friends of ours in the big data space, uh, pioneers who have been in stealth mode for a, a while, but now are out with a pub public launch of their, their company and product. Todd Papianu, the co-founder and CEO of Continuity, and Jonathan Gray, uh, co-founder and CTO, VP of Engineering, what's the title? CTO. CTO. Yep. Welcome, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you very these much. Guys have been on, these us. guys have been on multiple times, uh, certainly Todd and Jonathan. Jonathan, you were at Facebook when you were first on, and Todd, you were at EIR at Battery Ventures. Now you're both, you've been in stealth mode on all the times, kind of dancing around, talking about you know, what's going on in the industry. Now you've launched your company, so Juan, um, I want to get this out there for you guys to talk about continuity, because you guys did launch your company. Um, and what's notable is, um, Jonathan, you're at Facebook. Um, you know about big data, you know about Hadoop. Uh, Todd, you were a chief architect at Yahoo. And this is the web scale companies that invented the whole concept of where Hadoop is going today and everything happening in the industry is revolving around the web scale companies, Yahoo, Facebook, who essentially set this ball in motion. Mm -hmm. So um, congratulations and thanks for coming Thank on theCUBE and being thanks specific. Um, so let's get it out there. You launched Continuity, Todd, you're the CEO. Let's just get, get this out there. Tell us about the launch, the company, the positioning, and the product, and we're going to do a product demo. Yeah, yeah, we launched the company just a couple of days ago. It's been a pretty uh, steady uh, you know, storm of uh, media press, analyst briefings. Things have been going really well. We've got a booth here at Strata and uh, we had a ton of people come by the booth. Uh, the company Continuity, we're a developer-focused application fabric. You can think of us as the next generation application server for big data applications. And you know, we have this, uh, the Continuity app fabric, layers over the top of the underlying Hadoop infrastructure. And we really give you an application runtime and container to actually deploy all the applications into. Our goal is to really enable the next wave of application development in the big data space. We think that right now, and I just saw Arby talking about it, there's a lot of low-level infrastructure, but there's really not many apps. Arby's got a nice app, you know, but the, we need a wave of explosion of apps in the big data market. Without apps, no one's going to really do anything. So I want to just pivot off that real quick because Mike Olson last year with B uh, Ping Lee said, hey, we're a $100 million fund, we want to promote a lot of apps, and one of the things we've been talking on theCUBE yesterday and this morning was, that just kind of didn't happen. Now, analytics is a killer app, no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. That is happening, it's, it, insights are great, and, and that's going to continue to grow, but really on the application side, you really haven't seen anything. Well, you know why? It's just, it's just too early. It's too so, hard. So, so too hard. That's the problem. So, right? so it's let's too hard, too low level. For tell people us to why build apps. why that didn't happen, and then we'll go right into more detail on that. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, there's a huge barrier, you know, barrier to entry right now with building apps, right? All of the infrastructure is super low level. You know, getting out, you know, infrastructure up is hard. You know, if you can go to Cloudera, you know, those guys do a great job in packaging it. But even once you get it up, there's still the APIs are kind of like data kernel level APIs, right? Most application developers want to work at a high level set of abstractions, right? That's really a barrier to entry to actually building apps. And even if you get an app built and do your t two to three month kind of like, you know, science project, then you once you run around, run the app, monitor it, manage it, there's no tools out there for doing that at all. So that's specifically- No tools at all. Well, that's what we say anyway, yeah. of course, right? <laughs> well, the, the <laughs> There's one new tool now. Well, it's called the Continuity App Fabric. Well, yeah, we're going to get to that in a second. <laughs> it's an exciting product for developers. I mean, MongoDB has been very successful because it's been easy to use for developers. In, in the developer community, going back to open source, LAMP stack, I mean, spin up instances, what a concept. Really easy to get stuff done, mm -hmm. at least test and launch apps from a local server to, to things. So, so that's essentially what you're going for here, right? That ease of use concept, is that yeah. true? Yeah, I mean, I think if you look back into building Java server applications 20 years ago, 15 years ago, it was really the application server and the creation of a bunch of higher level APIs, reusable building blocks, you know, allowing individual developers to stand on the shoulders of everyone who came before them, who provided frameworks that made it very easy for them to focus on their application logic, their business, and forget about all the minutia of the infrastructure and low level stuff. And that really hasn't been done yet in big data. Yeah, I mean, I think it, one of the things we talk about in the Cuban, this we're passionate about, obviously I'm a startup junkie, we love startups. Startups create the future and developers are the key key equation to that in terms of value, for even in the marketplace. So if you don't hit the developers aren't rocking them with, mm -hmm. pr with product, there's no end game. So right. this is a real, has been stunted the market a little bit. Not, I mean, analytics has kind of saved the day, but explain some of the things that you guys are doing helping developers and the vision and how that, that renders itself into yeah, a product. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, a, you know, we, we focus on the horizontal application development lifecycle, right? We want to take a developer from idea creation all the way through writing, testing, debugging, figuring it out locally, then pushing on to, you know, up into production. Uh, we give people tools to, you know, plugins and SDKs and code samples and everything 
you know, with a local version of our app fabric so they can build their applications locally. And when they're ready, they push a button, they ship it straight up to our cloud and we just run it in production up there. And then we give them tools for doing the DevOps concept, context up there as so well. So before we get into the demo, Todd, I want to ask you another direct question. Um, obviously, we're big fans of HBase. We've been playing with it. Um, explain to the folks what's under the hood because it's really not that, I mean, it's so powerful, okay? And you know, we've seen direct examples of the power. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to show a demo, which I've seen, it's actually really easy to understand and use, but I want you to explain what's under the hood and sure. why HBase is so powerful and why it's so hard at the same time. Yeah, I mean, so our entire platform is built on Hadoop, HBase, Yarn, Zookeeper, the whole menagerie of the Hadoop ecosystem. And that's part of the challenge, I think, of ha people building applications today, which is you're not just using Hadoop. If I want to do random access, I need my HBase. And if I want to serve, I need a caching tier. And if I want to do streaming analytics, I need another system. And so people are building this patchwork. They're gluing uh, uh, it together. They're gluing together a whole bunch of different infrastructure components. And what we're trying to do is say, OK, well, let's put all this stuff together and do a unified platform. And let's layer a scale out application server layer on top of it. And then selectively expose the different functionalities of all these different uh, infrastructure components into our APIs. And so we abstract away from the very low level of Hadoop input formats and output formats. HBase, as you know, has byte arrays and very low level APIs around reads and writes. So designing a schema on HBase requires really six months of understanding what HBase is. And so what we do is Never mind if the schema changes, are there, are there data source changes? Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So and so, <laughs> you know, New library, of, another six months. I think <laughs> instead of, uh, instead of giving people low-level infrastructure, which assumes no use case. We assume some use cases and instead give people really easy ways to build search indices or build counters and OLAP cubes, or if they want to build time series databases. So right now, you can do that with HBase, you can do that with Hadoop, but you have to actually understand how to do that, right? And so by giving people object models, higher level things, we give people access to a bunch of really cool patterns that can be done on top of HBase, but we implement those patterns in a really efficient way, yeah. and instead they just get to use the objects. Yeah, one of the things, I mean, I mean you can extract, extract away the complexity, that's a win, but it's also mm -hmm. hard, as you mentioned, but also developers need an ease of use environment, so simplicity and flexibility is key. What did you guys do there around the simplicity and flexibility uh, piece? Well, I think one of the things we focused on, right, was like right now the developer experience in the big data industry is it's a bit like the homebrew computing club experience of the computers back in the day. You got a memory card from here and a disk drive and you know keyboard and you soldered it all together. What developers want is really more of the Apple or Visual Studio experience. It's nicely, tightly integrated, yeah. you know, works together. So we took all of this underlying infrastructure, led our app fabric on top, as John said, exposed the capabilities and did it through a unified API. And we give tools to basically, you know, beautiful abstractions with beautiful interfaces is our kind of like key motto internally. That's what we're trying to do for developers. Awesome. Uh, well, first of all, we're big friends of you guys and your work. I think it's a great product. We think Thank this you. is going to hopefully explode and enable more developers to actually do more general purpose apps. So let's set up the demo. So which one of you guys wants to set the demo up as context before we start I'm driving gonna, I'm the demo? I'm going to run the demo here. Okay, so um, we're going to go to the camera. Can we, uh, uh, and you're going to have voiceover on the camera. So let's go take a look at it. All right, cool. Are we ready to go? Yep, yep. All right. Let's hit it. So what I'm running here is the thing we call our single node edition, our developer edition of the platform. And so we've actually built an emulation layer on top of Hadoop and HBase and a single node version of the platform. So it's very easy for a developer to run this on their laptop and test, debug, profile, and do all that kind of stuff. What I'm going to show you here is creating an application, deploying an application, and then running that application. So just going to create something called a demo app. Right now there's nothing in it, but I already have my recipe prepared here. That would be on the local machine, right? So yeah, so all of this is running on localhost right now. And then at the end I'll show you how we push it up awesome. to the cloud. Um, and so this is an application that's made of three different components, two flows and a thing we call the query provider. And I'll show what each of these things look like. So just drag and drop to deploy that into the platform. And the key thing here is, of course, right, that you know it's just Java files. Java developers are building Java files all day, every day. They just package it up locally in their IDE, just drag and drop, ready to go. Right. So we've got our Java files deplo yeah, deployed. They've been exploded and deployed into the system. I'm going to start everything up here. What we see up on top here is two streams. Streams are how you get data into the system. And so these turn into REST endpoints or Flume endpoints. It allows you to stream one event at a time or in batches all of your uh, raw big data into the platform. 
flows are our real-time stream processing engine. And so this green lozenge right here is a stream that's the input into this flow. And I'm going to start my driver script here, which is making rest calls into this stream to feed it data. So that's a simulation file. You're just testing yep. like an app. Yeah, so just put a demo. Got it. Yeah. Right. This way we don't have to use the internet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Demo's uh, dodge in your favor, right? Dodge, which it, is dodgy internet the conference has been a bit yeah, yeah. dodgy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. So what we see here is uh, what we call tuples, individual events flowing through our flow. Each of these individual circles is what we call a flowlet. And if I pop this open, this is our flowlet pop-up, and it gives you more detailed insight into exactly what's happening inside of each of your individual components. So, for example, how many data operations we're doing, how busy it is, the number of tuples we're processing. One really cool thing that we've done with uh, BigFlow is it's elastically scalable at runtime. And on our UI, it's as simple as hitting a plus button. And hitting that plus button, clicking OK, there's now two of this flowlet running. And so on the so local- you're adding resources at that yeah, point. You're yeah, yeah. So in the local version, it's spinning up another thread. Up in the cloud, we're using Yarn to actually deploy a new VM, deploy a new JVM, run a new thing. And then in the back, we're rewiring the queues and doing all that other stuff. But to the developers, they click the plus button, they hit OK, and everything just happens automatically. Application stays running, never goes down. Um, That's part of the key for our platform, right? It's like we take care of a lot of the hard work. Like yeah. everybody in the continuity team has built some of the biggest, baddest big data applications and infrastructures on the planet, places like Facebook and you know Yahoo. We know what we're doing. We want to enable developers to be able to do it very simply, yeah. and we take care of the hard work for them. I think the I think the average developer doesn't want to get in the weeds and know you know what yarn, what's going on with yarn and obviously it's evolving mm -hmm. so yeah. it's just it's just a great service I mean it, needs, it should be easy to use yeah I mean the goal is to surface what developers care about and to try to abstract away everything so they so don't care about so what's going on about. now so this numbers. is a list of our data sets and data sets are something we've built on top of HBase and Hadoop that is what I was describing before we we expose patterns instead of raw HBase and so these are all a bunch of counter tables and a thing we call a sorted counter table. And so this is just metrics around how many writes am I doing, how many reads am I doing, uh, how much storage is my table is doing. So Last thing I wanted to show real quick here is our queries. Queries are analogous to stored procedures. Um, this allows you to deploy another jar file, which is one of the ones I deployed earlier, that contains a uh, request response method. You, you, we bind it to a REST URL and shuffle all of the quests in there. And so in this application, this is actually one of our customers' applications, they hit this REST endpoint from their web tier to actually serve data. And so a lot of the applications we're targeting initially are much closer to the serving tier. I think that's so one of the key things there, right? It's like, you know, you talked a lot about analytics being the key app. We actually think that there's a whole ton of kind of like new data applications, closed loop data applications that people want to build. We're basically trying to, trying to take, you know, the offline, the batch out of it, and you take signals in from, you know, from your app, you process it, and you push signals back out, right? We're trying to build these real-time closed loop applications for, you know, consumer intelligence apps, as we call it. So, there's a lot of people have been complaining about the cloud as they're going to rather stand up bare metal because of HBase and memory, and I looked at Amazon, and even Google Compute Engine, people who have been kicking the tires there, like, it's just too costly to run stuff in the cloud. How do you guys talk about that, and how does that relate to you guys actually pushing the cloud? Yeah, so, I mean, so, you know, John's been showing the local single node developer suite, and as a developer, you're writing your code, and you're testing it locally, debugging it in your IDE. When you're ready and you've proven that your app actually works, we have a very simple capability here where you just basically push your application up to the cloud. What we do is we take all of your application logic, all of your configuration, and we deploy it actually up onto our private cloud. So we offer that in two flavors. One is we can host and operate the entire private cloud for you. It's a full HBase Hadoop you know, infrastructure stack plus our stuff on top of it. Or you can take our private cloud edition and install it over your Hadoop and HBase installation if you have one already. So yeah, you know, so I can build my own cloud. So to you, cloud means yeah. Provision. It's here. really a PaaS, right? Yeah. I mean, we think Got of it. you know private PaaS, private cloud, Got that it. sort of thing, right? And we're trying to raise the abstraction level, right? So to, it's not to a requirement. PaaS. Cloud is not a requirement. You're just looking at it as, as an endpoint. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, mean, I, I think we really think about it as a developer PaaS. Wherever it's deployed, it's a developer PaaS, right? Mm -hmm. To the developer, it's very much platform as a service. They're not worried about the infrastructure. Yes. They're not worrying about how many nodes and all that kind of stuff. To them, it's a service. Awesome. 
Um, guys, uh, final question for you guys is what's next now that you've got uh, You've been funded, so you got some great big VCs, Andreessen Horowitz, Battery Ventures. Ignition. Um, did I miss anyone? Ignition? Ignition, Ignition. Yeah. Ignition great, great firm, so tier one VCs. You guys obviously rock star team. What's next? You launched the company. Uh, is it sales? Is it ramp up the engineering? All of the above? All of the above, All onwards above. and upwards. <laughs> you look at our website, <laughs> world domination. <right>? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so we have Todd Papiano, Jonathan Gray, both technical technical leaders in the industry, and hello, Todd is the CEO. Um, great Thank to have you on the cube, losing my mic here. <laughs> we'll be back with our next guest after this short break. Uh, continuity, check them out, platform as a service. Uh, hopefully increase the developer traction and get better apps out there. We'll be Thank right you. back after this break. Thanks a lot. <laughs>